Greetings and welcome back to another video. Today I will show you how to program the ICOM ICF 3020, 5010 and 5020 series and what peripherals you will need to buy to set up the programming environment. For this example I will use the mobile ICOM ICF 5022 radio built for the VHF bands. The first thing you will need is to buy a programming cable. What I recommend is to look at the manual for your specific radio and find the exact cable you need to program your radio. In my case, we can look under the options section and here we can see that my radio uses the OPC1939 cable. However, when I look at the radio, I can see that I do not have an optional cable slot for the OPC1939 connector on my radio, as shown in the manual. This leads us to further investigations and in this case I resorted to our good old friend Google and searched for available programming software for my specific radio. I stumbled across a website called Radiotronics UK and looking at the title we can see that my radio is mentioned in the title. On this site we also get access to the programming software you will need to program your radio. Keep in mind these programs can cost money, which it did in my case. Scrolling down, we can see the programming cable required to interact and communicate with the radio. In my case, I will need an OPC1122 cable. The suffixes after the OPC1122, for example the letter U, means that it is a USB cable. Once you know what cable you need, you can look up the closest vendor that sells the cable. If you don't mind waiting and want to buy it as cheap as possible, I would recommend buying it from either eBay or Banggood. In my case, I simply searched for the cable on eBay and found one for around $10. Once my cable had arrived, I needed to install the software. And to do that, I first needed to buy it from Radiotronics UK. Keep in mind that your purchase will need to be approved by a worker at Radiotronics UK before you can download it. In my case, it took one day for them to approve it. To install the software, you simply need to extract the file downloaded and run the installer. Once you come to the step where you need to provide user information, you need to enter your name, a company which can be either empty or just your name, and lastly a product ID. The product ID is applied to you in a TXT file with the name ID number and your radio. If you need more detailed information about the software and the installation process, you can read the provided manual. Now that you have the software installed and the needed accessories, you only have one thing left to do before you can start programming your radio, and that is to install the driver for the programming cable. In my case, when I plugged it into my Windows 10 machine, the driver installed automatically, but for my laptop with Windows 11, it did not install automatically. To check if your computer recognizes the cable, you will need to open your device manager on your Windows machine, and under ports, com and LPT, you should see a COM port called Profilic PL22 USB Serial or ICOM USB to Serial COM port. If your computer did not recognize the cable, you will need to download the driver manually. In some cases, ICOM will have the drivers available on their website, but in my case, after a bit of googling, I found out that the driver needed is the PL2303 Windows driver, which is a USB to UART serial driver. I will provide a link to the website in the description where you can download the driver. Once you have downloaded the driver and extracted the content from the compressed file, you will have two executables. The PL23XX check ship version and the PL23XXM log driver setup. The first step is to run the PL23XXM log driver setup executable. This will install the driver on your computer. Once the driver is installed, you will need to open your device manager again. Now you should see a port named Profilic PL22 USB Serial available. Take note of the COM number that the cable uses. In my case, it is COM4, which will be important later. Next, run the check ship version executable. Select COM4 and click the check button. If everything was successful, it should display the type of ship the cable uses. At this point, you have everything prepared to start programming your radio. Power off the radio, plug in the programming cable to both the radio and the computer. Once the cable is connected, power on the radio and open the software. 
In the top menu, under COM port, select the COM port used by the cable, which in my case was COM4. Read the data from your radio by clicking the computer icon or by pressing the clone menu and then selecting read TR. Your radio will make a sound and the software will read all the channels on the radio, displaying them in the software. After reading the data, I strongly recommend creating a backup of the current state in case something goes wrong. Once a backup is made, you are free to program your radio as desired. For example, you can add a new channel transmitting and receiving at the frequency 155.45 MHz, which in Sweden is a hunting band that does not require a license to operate on. After entering the desired information, write the data to the radio by clicking the radio icon or selecting the clone menu and pressing write TR. The software will write to your radio and once completed, you may need to restart the radio if it does not do so automatically. Upon powering the radio, if we scroll through the channels, we will see that a new YouTube channel has been created. If we communicate on the 155.45 MHz frequency with another handheld, you should hear your ICOM receiving data. For more detailed programming and functions, refer to the manual provided with the software. I hope this provides you with an understanding of what you need to buy, install and how to program your radio to your preferences. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe and consider leaving a comment if you successfully programmed your radio thanks to this video. Have a great day and take care!